All right, morning everyone. Welcome to another episode of Trading Bitcoin with your host, Tone Vase, coming to you live as the markets have been open for a couple of hours. Uh, and today is Monday. It is Monday, right? Oh, shit. My bad. Uh, Monday, November 9th. Uh, it has been an absolute crazy week. Uh, the election week has been absolutely nuts. And it's only getting more insane. Uh, but we'll get to the election after we get after price. Uh, those that don't want to stick around for the political discussion are, of course, welcome to turn off after we look at charts. Uh, so let's go ahead and go right into the chart. I don't want to keep people here for the political chat uh, if they don't want to. Uh, and politics are important. I guess I'm a little more invested than others for several reasons. And we'll talk about those after the charts. Okay, here's the weekly chart. Um, as you guys re recall, all week I have been saying, well, the second half of the week anyway, if the week closes above 15,000, I will be bullish going into this week. Well, this the current week has just started. Did we close above 15,000? And the answer is, of course, we did. We closed a smidge under 15,500, which was my... Uh, I believe might have been my daily uh, level, but on a weekly scale, we closed about 15,000. So I am currently still bullish on a weekly scale. And we are now only two more weeks away from a potential weekly top uh, that could happen in the 17, $18,000 range. From a weekly perspective, nothing bad is really happening. The Even the RSI has still not gone into an area that requires you to sell your bullish position. Uh, the MACD is still bullish and the CMF is still bullish. So the weekly chart is completely bullish without any concerns. Uh, now, here's the daily chart. The daily chart is becoming pretty erratic. Uh, we had, uh, I got out of my position over here around 15,300 and I was happy with that exit. Uh, sure, I could have gotten a better exit on Friday, but that's okay. Uh, I was very happy with my exit on Saturday when we were down big. Now, uh, Sunday night, we were closing pretty high. We closed almost about 15,500. And had we, uh, and at that close, Going into early this morning, I guess, or I'm not sure when we reversed, we're going to look at it from a lower level time frame. But as of right now, I'm looking at this chart. And at some point on the current candle, I would have been very happy and very bullish. In fact, uh, when I, uh, at some point, like I don't know, maybe seven, eight hours ago or whenever, uh, I was looking at the price of Bitcoin and it was above 15,600. And I'm like, oh man, uh, did I really get out of my GBTC position? And am I really going to be buying back Bitcoin at a higher price? Look, I don't mind. A good trade is a good trade. But I really want to buy the dip. And early this morning, I was ready to give up on that dip. And I was already looking at how do I buy Bitcoin with PayPal? Because I have a bunch of money sitting on PayPal that I have nothing else to do with. Well, there's things I can do with it. But as far as moving it out of PayPal... I'm having a problem. So if I can't move it out of PayPal, I might as well uh, put it into Bitcoin with PayPal until I solve my problem of moving money out of PayPal. Or I find something I want to spend that money on, like maybe a car that isn't 13 years old as of two months from now. <laughs> so uh, the daily chart right now does not look good. But we reversed on a dime and we can reverse in the opposite direction on a dime as well. I'm not very optimistic here. Let's look at the funding rate. Uh, the funding rate is starting to come back and uh, once again, about to start favoring the bulls. The, well, the Arun is still favoring the bulls. The RSI has now told you to get out of your bullish position. It did not do that. Well, I guess it could have done that a few days ago as well on the 7th but it's certainly telling you this now. 
the MACD is getting ready to cross over in a couple of days, uh, but for now it's still bullish. The ADX, oh, this is interesting. So the ADX actually has crossed uh, very, very high though, but it crossed its average line, which in some cases is enough to take your profit. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, ADX is telling you to really slow your roll there for a minute. Uh, another way to uh, consider an ADX sell is when you have a crossover between uh, the ADX plus uh, and ADX minus. This, these are your red lines. Uh, you know what? It's not an ADX. Uh, the ADX, I think, is one of the most complicated um, oscillators we have. I always find it frustrating teaching it, uh, but I do teach it as part of the intro to trading class. And the CMF is still bullish. So what is the daily chart telling me? At the moment, it's telling me nothing. It's telling me we're consolidating. I need to go to a lower level time frame. I am. I sold my position. I will wait. I am not buying back. I still think I will. I will get a chance to buy back in the thirteen thousand dollar range, uh, and I still think we can go lower. So here is the four hour chart. Now the four hour chart is really, really interesting. And right here, when these candles were breaking out, I would have been very, very bullish. Uh, I believe uh, there was a very good question at the end of my last stream, which I know was three hours long, but towards the end of that stream and we were sitting around here somewhere, like around 15,000, I wanna say when I was doing that stream, it was a uh, Saturday night, uh, nothing better to do. Uh, so it would have been here on the seventh at night. And someone asked the question, if I did not sell up here and I'm still holding a long position, what would, what would I do? Well, I told them that if I didn't sell over here, what I did, uh, because I sold, um, I forget actually, cause it's a four hour chart now, but anyway, I sold on the way up before the, right before the top. And otherwise I would have sold when I saw the triangle, but over here on this candle, I said, if I hadn't sold yet, I would just hold it. I would sell uh, around 5,300, 53, 5,400 if I saw weakness. Here is a weakness to me. This candle right here is weakness. That is a reversal candle, which shows me weakness. And now we start trading low. Yes, we didn't break the low, but somewhere over here, somewhere on this reversal candle, I would have gotten out of the market had I still been bullish. However, however, had this candle been happening during GBTC open trading hours, which it did not, thank God, had that candle been happening uh, during, uh, like right now, had this candle been happening, I would have been comfortable going long above this line, which means I would have gotten in at around 5,400, hopefully a little bit lower, but uh, definitely below, I'm oh, sorry, 15,500. I'm calling it 5,500, but 15,500. Uh, and I would have gotten in long here. And unfortunately, we reversed really, really quickly. And um, it, the, and I'd probably still be in that bad long trade. But right now, um, I would have a tough decision to make. Do I cut my losses or do I trust my stop loss, which would have been around here somewhere? Uh, this would have been my stop loss. But right now, I have absolutely no optimism whatsoever on this four level time frame or even the one level time frame. Let's go take a look and see what that looks like because I don't actually know. See, on a one level time frame, uh, my entry would have been even worse. On a one level time frame, my entry would have been higher. It would have been 15550 15, bucks or so. And I've only, I would have been in profit for like an hour and a half. And now I'm totally screwed. Uh, in addition, this breakout is happening on a green star. It is above the prior swing high and it's going above the prior top. See, that's a perfect top on a one hour scale for me with the MRI. Uh, and if I had been long, this is where I'm taking my exit. So that thing earlier, what I said, let's see what hour this is. This is the... 1 p.m. on Sunday. It says yesterday, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, I believe. Yes, New York time, Eastern time. And if I go to the four-hour chart, 
let's go back to the four hour chart. I want to see what, what, what the 1 p.m. candle was. I'm assuming it's this candle here. Yep, that's it. Uh, this is the 11 a.m. candle for four hours. So on this candle, inside this candle, on the third hour of this four hour candle, you had your perfect exit according to the MRI. This is where I would sell that long position right here, but not on this candle. Well, maybe on this candle because it's an MRI candle, but certainly in the beginning of the next candle. So that person that asked me the question when we were trading around here somewhere, and I said, you know what? If I didn't sell and I was still long, I'd stay long. But that long would have exited right here, which is actually an even better exit than my exit because I took my exit over here. I took my exit in this uh, uh, somewhere in this uh, 15,250, 15,300. So this would have been a better exit. But right now, my exit looks good. Uh, my exit looks better. Oh, this is the hourly chart. I, anyway, I got out here and I may have gone out again. I don't remember it at this point. That was now, it's now ancient history because like five days ago, but I've been consistent. Like I got out around that $15,300 area. And right now, uh, once again, I look smart. Uh, so I looked stupid right after, and then uh, I, I didn't look smart all through this triangle, but now it looks smart again. So I, I'm sleeping fine at night. I'm not worried, uh, but this is an ugly looking drop. On the hourly chart, it's even worse. Uh, here is the red star. Yeah, and, and this, would have, this candle would have gotten me in trouble, like I said. We're above the prior swing high. We're uh, here. We're above the MRI top here. We're just kicking off a, a bullish trend, but this green star would have shown up in the be very beginning of the candle. First five minutes, you have the green star. So had you gotten in, uh, right here below 15,500, you could have gotten out break even. My stop loss uh, on the hourly chart would have been set somewhere either here or down here or worst case scenario below the support line uh, of the MRI. Either way, all of this shit is done. Um, either way, I am exiting this trade by some, if I was very, very generous with my stop loss, this would have been it, and we haven't hit it yet, but I believe that we will. So at the moment, hourly and four hour, I am pretty bearish. The daily, however, I'm not bearish yet. But if we get a new daily low close, if we close lower than two days ago on this current candle, I will be very bearish going into tomorrow. Very bearish on a daily scale. Daily. Weekly, still bullish. Really depends on your time horizon here. Uh, GBTC dropped hard. Uh, I certainly got a better exit than this. Uh, I don't remember where I got out, but it was definitely uh, in the $16 uh, dollar range uh, that I got out at, I think. And the GBTC premium dropped. Uh, yeah, so I got, a, I got a pretty decent exit. I think I got out. I, I didn't get out at 17. I got out at like 16 something. I, I don't know if it was 80, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to speculate, but it was certainly above, uh, it, was, it was certainly somewhere in the mid to upper $16 range when I got out of my GBTC. Maybe it was 17. I, don't, I really don't remember. I have to check my, uh, my broker. It, maybe it was above 17. I, what day is this? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. It would have had to have been above 17. Would have had to have been above 17. Uh, no, no, gold. Holy shit. Uh, so Bitcoin doesn't see, it seems to have lost its correlation with the stock market because stock market is flying to the upside. Gold has crashed and Bitcoin has crashed. Gold has done the exact same thing as Bitcoin. Just look at this. Uh, look at the, oh, it's the weekly chart of gold. Sorry. Let's go to daily. Um, gold has really taken a nosedive. I have no idea why. I, I really don't know. I have not checked the news. Maybe they found a big gold deposit in Russia. I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. But this is bad. Remember what I've been saying. A close below this red line makes me bearish. A close above that green, that black line makes me bullish. We closed above the line. Going into today's day, I would have been very bullish on gold. Yes, it was a uh, uh, extension B uh, ending, telling you, giving you a red arrow, telling you to be careful. But we also had, you know, an MRI uh, warning buy signal 
that would have still had me be bullish. Uh, this is just one of those days. It's like, holy shit, you tip your hat to the market and you thank God that, they, that God created stop losses for you. Uh, so there you go. Uh, but right now, if you slept through this and you didn't have your stop loss in gold, you're almost screwed. Um, you almost have to take this stop loss now. Uh, this looks absolutely terrible. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm actually curious how silver is doing. Uh, is silver doing just as bad? Uh, low chart layout. I also got silver. Silver weekly, I guess. I want to see if silver is getting crushed. It is. Uh, silver is still pretty damn high. Silver had a monster move, an absolute monster move. I believe the, uh, and this is where I really piss off a lot of the hard uh, gold bugs and stuff. I believe that silver should be under $10. Uh, I be, I, that, that's my personal opinion. I believe that silver is grossly overvalued, grossly overvalued. I would never buy silver. Um, I would buy gold, but I would never buy silver. Uh, maybe as a speculative play, maybe leverage futures. Um, like I would buy silver uh, for the same reason I would potentially maybe at some point buy Litecoin uh, just to speculate because I think there is a te te technical analysis setup. I don't believe silver is valuable. Uh, I believe that silver has a uh, nice industrial value. Uh, silver is very, very useful in the industry, but uh, that's not why most people are buying silver. No, no, I wouldn't short a volatile asset. That's just stupid uh, because uh, uh, I, I, I don't underestimate the stupidity of others that can pump silver to $100 a coin. So uh, there's a big difference between not buying something and shorting something. Uh, I'm, not dumb, I'm not that stupid uh, to short silver. I would never short silver. Uh, but... Um, if I am shorting silver, I'm going long gold. Uh, I would play the spread. I would never short silver on, on its own. It's just like I would never short Litecoin because idiots can pump it. Uh, but uh, silver has uh, very good industrial qualities. But keep in mind that if you are buying silver because you think that it, it has good industrial qualities, then... Uh, you are right raising the price of silver, which means using silver in industry is now more expensive. And if using silver in industry is now more expensive, only one of two things will happen. The industry will look for alternatives to using silver, which means now there is less demand for silver dropping the price of silver. Or the other thing that will happen if the industry can't find alternatives to silver, and they still have to use expensive silver, they would raise the price of the things that silver is used for, which means that while you are making some money on your silver rising in price, you are paying for that by paying more money for an iPhone because the iPhone uses the silver that you are helping raise in price. Now, I'm not here to be a dictator and force people not to speculate, on useful metals, whether they're copper, whether they're um, uh, whether they're silver. But remember, an investment in silver, thinking that the industry needs it and you will get rich, is no different than an investment in copper, thinking that it's so needed for pipes in a house. So anyone that says I'm investing in silver, uh, but I would never invest in copper, that's dumb. They're contradicting themselves because silver and copper have absolutely uh, no, I mean, they have a, a geological and a chemical difference, but uh, they don't really have a um, use case difference. Uh, they're used for different things, but how they're used for things is pretty much uh, in line. Gold is different. Gold is actually money. Uh, gold uh, is a backup for money. Gold is still used as money. Well, it's not, but it could be used as money. So investment in gold is other than an investment in the speculative use of uh, gold in industry. If you're investing in gold, you're actually investing in hard money. An investment in silver, uh, if you think you're investing in silver because you think that it's hard money, uh, you are wrong. It, it's just a wrong position. So uh, it's kind of like the person that doesn't want to invest in Bitcoin because they think that uh, Bitcoin 
uh, it is not decentralized. Uh, it's centralized. They think that there will be uh, more than 21 million Bitcoin tomorrow. Like a person that like, doesn't understand Bitcoin at all and is making an argument as to why they're not investing in Bitcoin. Uh, this is almost this is like, uh, kind of like an inverse of that. Uh, if you're investing in silver because of its money properties, uh, it's just wrong. And it's a terrible reason to invest in silver. Uh, you, the only reason to invest in silver is as a speculator based on technical analysis or potentially as a fundamental analysis play on, in, on silver's use in industry. But then uh, why aren't you investing in copper? It's the same, it's the same thing. That's my thoughts on silver. So uh, maybe I should have, I actually did go long silver because it got so depressed. Um, and uh, I got out too early though. Uh, I was so, uh, I thought I was a genius uh, going silver from uh, the MRI low to the MRI high. And then that was uh, uh, nothing compared to where it went. So, but, but I thought I was a genius uh, because I got a good silver trade from uh, here to here. Uh, in early in early March, I did a silver play, but I did not think it would go that high at all. I did not think silver would reach thirty bucks. That is, uh, that's that, that to me that's pretty much like a mini bubble. Uh, I don't think it's worth that much. So once silver breaks these lows, uh, it'll probably go down hard. We'll see what happens. I don't know the news. I don't know the, the, the news in gold and silver. I have no idea. Uh, if someone, if one of my moderators wants me to, uh, wants to put something, some news about gold in there. Uh, someone says, I tried to catch uh, a golden falling knife at 1860. Will I get burned? Uh, we can take a look. Probably. Oh, look at that. Look at Bitcoin. Beautiful candle. And we're holding set up. Uh, we're, we're holding support. Look at that. Might reverse here. Might reverse. I would have loved to see an MRI bottom. As long as we avoid this line. If we go below 14.5, uh, I'm going to be expecting Bitcoin to go all the way down to below 14. Uh, but it uh, looks like we're rebounding a little bit here. 1860 on gold. I have to go to a lower level time frame. Let's go to the one hour. Look, it's slowing down the big fall. I want to see if there's anything in the 1860 area that I would have considered buying or catching the falling knife. Oh, why isn't the MRI working? And then we'll go to the 10 minute chart. I would not buy gold here as a long-term play. I would stay patient, but as a short-term play, it's possible. Now, I don't see anything here from an MRI perspective. I probably don't have stars turned on either, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. Let's go to the 10 minute chart. That's probably your right here. Um, I would have already taken the stop loss. Had I bought uh, gold right here at 1860 and it broke these lows, I would have been out with a stop loss. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like playing around like that. Right now, to me, this 10 minute chart is not bullish at all. Uh, is it possible you're going to get burned? Uh, yes, uh, it's very possible. What I would do is if I bought gold, at uh, 1860 and I saw gold above 1860, I would probably just get out. Uh, I wouldn't play with it. So if you get a Bitcoin is rallying right now this hour, if gold rallies back to 1860, I would get out of that trade. If you take, you know, a cup of coffee worth of profit, uh, that's what I would do. What I consider getting a motorcycle. I had a motorcycle, uh, permit. I never got around to getting my license, but I was a lot younger back then. I probably wouldn't get a motorcycle. Uh, I'm getting too old for that. So I would get out of gold 
if it got back to 60 or I would put in a stop loss, uh, not too far lower than now, because if there's any more weakness in gold, like I don't want to look, it's fallen a lot for the day, but looking at it from a bigger picture, it's still got plenty of room down. That That's a nasty candle. That's uh, it's not something I want to play around with. Look, the last time we had a nasty candle like that was on August 11th. And sure, you rallied back up nicely. The following day, you made a lower low. You rallied nicely. But where have you been since then? Uh, so if you, let's say, bought uh, gold in the, in the, at the bottom of that candle, and then you were down, and then you were up, and then down, up, down, up, and now you're in the red completely, and then yesterday you got back into the green. And what are you thinking? Finally, I just waited uh, two months, three months. I waited three months. Finally, that uh, me catching a falling knife has finally got me into a bullish position. You wake up the next day and it's at a whole new low. Like, ah, you don't want to be sitting here uh, like, like, like whoever bought down here in the same way. And now you're going to be sitting three more months finally make a cup of coffee and then it drops another giant leg. I think um, a decent buying opportunity for gold is more in the 1750 area, not the 1850 area. I don't like these giant candles. I don't know what's causing it. Uh, and if nothing is causing it, that's even worse. Even worse. All right, we got a super chat question. Look at Tilray. Man, looking at stocks right now. Oh, I should probably look at the stock market. Uh, is that a new all-time high? Wow, that is a new all-time high. The stock market is at a new all-time high. I can now drop this Fibonacci. It is useless. And um, that is a new all-time high. As you guys know, I love selling uh, the break of prior swing low. And I love buying. Uh, the break of prior swing high. And this is a really difficult break of the prior swing high to buy because you got a long way to get to it. But if you were able to catch the market early this morning, you're doing really well. Uh, if you're in the cash market, you never got a chance. Do I think this can go to 4,000? Uh, yes. I've always been bullish the stock market. I've always said S&P 5,000. I, I mean, the COVID messed, messed it all up. If, if it wasn't for COVID and the disastrous handling of COVID with the shutdown of the economy, uh, the stock market would probably be uh, way above 4,000 by now. Uh, I was very bullish uh, go around here. Uh, early 2020, I was very bullish the stock market. So um, I think we would be way above 4,000 right now and probably, and Trump would have obviously been reelected I don't think the Democrats would have pulled off uh, the, uh, they would have been able to pull off uh, the election fraud uh, to get their guy elected had it wasn't for COVID. Obviously, there wouldn't be mail-in ballots, but we're about to get into that political discussion, which uh, disgusts me and sickens me more with every single day. Every single day, more and more people are showing evidence, uh, real evidence of election fraud. And while uh, the narrative, uh, okay, uh, we're gonna, you know what? I'll save the, the election discussion. I'm gonna look at Tilray. I don't really wanna look at stocks. I don't know, I just don't care. Tilray's doing great. Uh, now I believe I told people, well, I shouldn't have, I, I don't give advice, but I believe I told people that I would be out on this candle uh, because earnings is coming. And I don't know if earnings was reported this morning or earnings is going to be reported later today, but I am not holding the stock through earnings. I will wait. Uh, it's still weekly uh, bullish. And uh, the perfect buying opportunity was right here on a weekly MRI buy. It was uh, early October. And I would not hold it through earnings. So there you go. A simple analysis. Please talk about the vaccine. Uh, so Zero Hedge put out an article saying that uh, New York wants to do mandatory vaccines. Did you guys see that? Let me let me pull that up. 
Uh, let me see, where was it? Uh, and um, look, I really should read this. I don't trust Zero Hedge. I don't at all. So we're going to take a look at this and see if it's bullshit uh, or more so is, um, is Zero Hedge exaggerating uh, their views of the article by 18,000% like they love to do. I really, I honestly don't like Zero Hedge guys. They break a lot of stories, uh, but you have to uh, fact check Zero Hedge uh, more than uh, almost any other website uh, for uh, this kind of shit. Uh, the New York State Bar Association is urging the state to adapt mandatory COVID vaccinations. So this is how we fact check. We click on that. Um, once they become once they become available, if voluntary measures fail to produce public health, well, that's certainly debatable uh, what that means. And has recommended following current New York law, including exemptions for religious, philosophical, or personal reasons. Well, that's everyone. Uh, that is literally everyone. So this is a non-story. So if I am mandated to take a vaccine, but I am not mandated to take a vaccine, if I have religious, philosophical, or personal reasons, then I don't have to take the vaccine. So this is, uh, that makes, it, 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 it's either mandatory or it's not mandatory. So uh, once I see this personal reasons, um, you know, I wish this was the mask policy. Uh, you have to wear a mask but uh, you can avoid wearing a mask for religious, philosophical, or personal reasons. Great, I would never wear a mask. So uh, once again, uh, please fact check uh, Zero Hedge's uh, clickbaity headlines uh, from uh, actual uh, articles. And you can usually fact check within the Zero Hedge article itself. They give you a dumb headline. Uh, the headline should be, uh, New York City would love to do mandatory uh, vaccinations. However, according to laws, uh, people would be able to opt out for religious, philosophical, and personal reasons. That's the headline. Uh, the way New York's headed, they would also love to have a full-blown communist dictatorship. Uh, unfortunately, New York State is still part of America with the Constitution, and therefore, uh, they will not be able to do it. And California is one step ahead of them. Um, I don't think I want to read the rest of this. Uh, Pfizer's in the news about a vaccine. I'm not taking a vaccine. I, I made this very clear. I will, um, I'm never taking the COVID vaccine. Like there better be one hell of a reason for me to take the COVID vaccine. Like prison time versus COVID vaccine, I may have to do the COVID vaccine. But if it's headed to prison time or COVID vaccine, I'd rather be out of the country so that I don't have to make that choice. Pfizer vaccine is moving the market. Okay. Pfizer expects to cross. Oh, actually, I need to know this because um, if Pfizer is going to come out with a vaccine and I need to gauge how the government's going to force the vaccine on people. So I really need to know where I should be living, which countries. And we're not just talking in uh, US or Europe, it's anywhere. So, for example, Europe may take the vaccine more seriously than America. And that tells me I should not be uh, having residency in Europe. Nine minutes ago, let's see. 
Uh, I really don't want to click on a headline uh, from a website called uh, State News or is it Stat News? Stat News, that's better. So this came out this morning. Uh, I thought it was State News. I'm like, nah, I don't want to click that. A COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer and biotech is strongly effective. Early data from large trial. Uh, is anyone surprised? Is anyone Wow. Is anyone surprised that three days after they announced that the Democrats have stolen the election, oh, sorry, won the election, um, all of a sudden the vaccine's here. The vaccine's here. What did I say on this podcast um, last week? I said that they are going to fear monger you with COVID for a few more months just to make sure Biden gets in. He would look like a total hypocrite if he opens the economy in January, February. But come March, come on the one year anniversary of the shutdown, the Democrats uh, are going to immediately say, we have to open the economy back up. This is, we have a vaccine. It is 90, it is 110% effective uh, because apparently you can have 110% uh, voting turnout. Uh, versus a uh, hundred uh, versus registrations for that voter turnout. It's the same shit. It's the same exact shit. Um, the Democrats need to get in there. They're going to immediately open the economy up. There will be no COVID. Uh, everyone's going to be barbecuing and having fun in America for Memorial Day weekend, uh, which happens in May. They're going to open it up in March, uh, May 1st, maybe the latest. It'll all be open. It'll all be over. The entire thing, like I really wanted to avoid, uh, I, 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 I'm not a conspiracy guy. I never said at any point that they continued to push the COVID narrative in order to get mail-in ballots in. But in hindsight, uh, because it is so abundantly clear how uh, much they cheated with the mail-in ballots. Um, in hindsight, it is uh, really obvious as to why uh, the whole COVID scare was so bad to push mail-in ballots. Like, like it is so freaking obvious. And COVID is ending. COVID's done. Uh, this is just that last fear mongering uh, because the Democrats don't have control yet. Uh, once they do, uh, COVID's done. COVID's over. And I sent out a tweet right after the election. I said, here's your good news. Uh, the good news is uh, COVID's going to end and the riots are going to end. The peaceful protests are going to end uh, and COVID is going to end with the Democrats winning the election. However, uh, so will your freedom and uh, capitalism. So your choice. Oh, of course. Like, look, I am not, I don't support Republicans. I don't like Republicans almost as much as I don't like Democrats. I hate them both. I want to make it very clear. And um, those of you that don't want to hear uh, the next sentence because it's going to piss you off, just this is the time to stop watching because I'm done talking about the price of Bitcoin. Okay. I don't support Republicans. I don't support Democrats. I literally support Trump. Trump. It's just Trump, not the Republicans. It's Trump. And the reason why I support Trump is because he's not a politician. He did not stand there in his first election and talk shit and then do the opposite of what he talked about. He tried, he did some stuff he said he was going to do, and he certainly tried to do the other stuff that he hasn't done. But what Trump has not done is stood there and said X and then did the opposite of X. Any reason for airlines not to recover as COVID disappears? Yes, 100%. Uh, the airlines are in deep shit. And, I, and um, um, I'll give you a personal experience here. So I fly a lot. 
as you guys know, those of you that have watched my channel, uh, I know I'm going to pause the, the video. Remind me to open the video because I was going to go to Twitter. So I fly a lot. It's a good thing about the airlines. I fly a lot. And uh, through all the conferences, I've been flying for the last, well, not counting this year. Uh, 2016, I started traveling. Uh, 2017, 18, and 19, I spent uh, the majority of the year just traveling country to country to country. I have absolute, I have never been upgraded for free because I have status that is higher ranked than other people on the flight. So business people fly a lot. People fly for business all the time. Uh, no matter how many points I have with my airlines, I have never been upgraded. Not from economy to uh, uh, economy plus, not from economy plus into business, never. Um, last week I was upgraded twice, twice. Why does that happen? That happens because I am literally a nobody in the eyes of an airline because of my uh, not so frequent, frequent flying uh, status. Because all these business people are so far ahead of me, but business people aren't flying. No business people are, first of all, business, there's barely business and business people aren't flying. And as business people continue to get used to Zoom, there will be no reason for them to fly. When all of these companies come back that used to have a lot of business flights for people, uh, people used to love flying. Like, hey, I get, to, I get free flights, I get free miles, I get to go to another country, I get to have free dinners while I'm traveling. And companies used to pay for that. Companies are gonna be lean machines. They're gonna be like, why are we going to send you somewhere? Use freaking Zoom. You've been using it all year long in 2020. So all of this uh, travel done by businesses and corporates, that's going to get so scaled down because it has been proven that it's not necessary. And now uh, avid travelers like myself are going to be way higher on the priority list of uh, free upgrades. And Airlines make most of their money from business travelers, not from guys going on vacation. You know, you and your job, how often are you going to fly somewhere? You get like two or three weeks of vacation and you go somewhere. There, and meanwhile, there are people for jobs that are traveling multiple times a week. And that is, uh, first of all, that's ended for now. And that ain't coming back anytime soon. Uh, possibly it will never be back to the same levels, maybe in a decade or two. So the airlines are actually in trouble. Like I couldn't believe it. Like I got, I got the message from the airline. Uh, you've been upgraded from premium economy into business. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't like a full bed kind of business, but, uh, but it was great. And I'm like, holy shit. Then it happened on, on, on the next flight too. And on the first flight, I was literally the first name on the list. On the second flight, I was like the third name on the list. And like, I don't know, like five to seven people were, were upgraded. So um, let's talk a little bit about the election fraud. A uh, little bit. Uh, two uh, cool tweets came through this morning. I'm trying not to retweet too much. So this one cracked me up. Uh, by the way, if you don't follow uh, Julia from Brave the World, uh, she's been on my channel before on those mega streams. Uh, great, great channel. She's pretty political, though, uh, very political. Uh, but go ahead. There is an endorsement uh, to follow uh, Brave the World. She has a YouTube channel as well. I don't think she posts that often anymore. So here is a nice story. And this woman is in law enforcement. So this isn't like some uh, random person. It's uh, someone from law enforcement who says that her dog was her service dog from law enforcement was registered to vote and actually voted because uh, the dogs, uh, what is it? The, uh, the chip in the dog, microchip number, which still kind of bothers me that like you're chipping your dog, but hey, it's a government dog, you know, government can, you know, uh, abuse their dogs in any way they like, I guess. Uh, I'm not a, 
I, I don't know if I would microchip my dog. Uh, if anything, I would put the microchip in the collar. And even then I'm not, I'm a little concerned about the government tracking my dog, but um, the microchips registration number of her dog was used as the dog's social security number. And her dog was listed as a uh, 18 year old college student that ended up voting in the election. So this is a really great interview. And she said she had trouble uh, finding out more information because she didn't know uh, the dog's birth date uh, in order to try and get the details on, uh, on the dog's voting. Unfortunately, uh, because of privacy, she'll never know who the dog uh, voted for. Uh, but uh, this, was, uh, uh, this was pretty cool. Stop spreading fake news. Oh, how is this fake news? It's an interview with a person. It's kind of like I quote someone and they say something and that's automatically fake news. How do you know this is fake news? No, she did not vote through her dog. Her dog somehow voted and then she found out that her dog voted. She voted for herself and then found out that her dog had also voted. Guys, the rest of the show is politics, so you don't have to keep watching. Uh, here is another one. And of course, uh, those that are in disbelief will not believe it. But here you can see in real time how 20,000 votes flip from, from Trump and are awarded to Biden. So you can see 1,690,000 votes versus 1,252 um, in Pennsylvania. I think those were the numbers. Nope, I'm sorry, that wasn't Pennsylvania. But you can see it here. And then someone took like screenshots of this. So you can see it. And the next time they go to Pennsylvania, all of a sudden, this many votes flip from one to the other. So in this little video, there it is. No, that's Michigan. Damn. So I think, I think it was Pennsylvania. And the same thing happened in Michigan too. Um, so uh, this video is only what? Less than a minute long? 43 seconds long. And during these 43 seconds, you can see how the voting count was this. And then all of a sudden, it changes by 20,000 from Trump are instantly awarded to Biden and taken away from Trump. So this election needs to be completely recounted. And I just want to see fair number of votes. That's all I want. And that's what a lot of people want. And for some reason, anyone who doesn't want this election recounted so that only valid votes count, that person, like, I don't know what that person is thinking. Like, explain to me your logic. Are you so delusional that you would destroy the foundation of your country to cheat in an election? Because you think that the ends of cheating in an election justify the means because you like the other guy better and somehow the majority of the country is wrong. Like, like I explain your logic. Can someone that doesn't want to do a recount of valid voting, I, I wanna see that, uh, I know everyone is screaming, your side lost, you should just concede. I don't understand the logic of not getting it right. All right, I didn't really have anything else to like to say, but it is really bad. Here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. 30 seconds later, so there you can see the numbers. Uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, 30 seconds apart, go from six, uh... <laughs> excuse me guys. And, um, but here's the best part. Uh, obviously look, 42% voted, that didn't change. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is 19,958 votes being taken away from Trump and handed to Biden. So one number 
drops by this and the other number rises by that. Explain that. Can someone explain that? I would love to hear someone say, oh, they were counted wrong the first time and this was the correction. If someone was to come out out of Pennsylvania and explain that this is what happened and they didn't tell you in real time that they did that, by the way. Um, and how do you not demand a full recount of valid votes in Pennsylvania and any state? Because remember, this kind of, uh, this kind of shenanigan was Michigan was accused of this, not Pennsylvania. Michigan was accused of just handing Trump votes to Biden votes because of a glitch. So clearly, if it affects more than one state, every state should freaking be recounted, including the red states. All right, let's see what this is. I don't know, I haven't seen these yet. Are these different states, right? Pennsylvania, Michigan. Um, so I'm not sure what this is. 3 a.m. Wednesday morning before count stopped. Well, Trump's winning Michigan. Trump, I remember Trump winning Michigan, North Carolina, Wisconsin. Trump should have won all of those states. Right, so here polls are closed, right? But they might not have counted all the votes. Uh, I'm not sure why Michigan and Wisconsin are down here again. Uh, numbers look. Uh, let me see here. Okay, reporting 59%. All right, so the numbers look the same. Anyway, I. Uh, so I, I can't like, I can't even believe how much I uh, like bringing in fake mail-in ballots wasn't enough for them to win. They also had to cheat with the machine software that like, I, I don't even understand how to comprehend the fact that um, getting um, from what I'm reading, and could be fake news. Apparently, there were some places, some counties had more votes than registered voters. So they not only had to create more votes than should have taken place, uh, they couldn't even cap it at the number of registrations for 100% turnouts for voting which probably has never happened in the history of any country on any planet in any universe. Uh, even in Brazil, where you get a fine for not voting, uh, people still don't vote. Um, and um, so capping it at the number of registered voters is not enough cheating. They have to go over that, uh, bringing in your own, having dogs vote, uh, bringing in your own mail-in ballots that uh, may, uh, I don't know where the hell they printed those. We're going to find out. And uh, I, can, I can speculate on the country, but let me not say it. Uh, that wasn't enough cheating. They are uh, not, uh, not allowing Republicans to oversee the counting process without touching anything that wasn't enough cheating. They also had to fuck with the machine software to straight up hand Trump votes to Biden. Like, oh my God. It's kind of like you decide to cheat on an exam and it's not enough for you to, you know, bring in like glasses that show you the answers. You also have to cheat off of the guy next to you uh, and uh, you need something else and you need extra time. La, la, like, holy shit.
Isn't Biden good for Bitcoin? Who gives a flying fuck if Biden is good for Bitcoin? You know who's best for Bitcoin? Mao, Hitler, Kim Jong-un. You want them to be your president? Who gives a shit if Biden's good for Bitcoin? It's an election. Who's good for the country? Who's good to defend the constitution? If you are willing to, if you are willing to over, uh, excuse this kind of cheating because your Bitcoin can go up an extra 5%, you, you're, not, you're not the kind of person I want in my circle. Maybe you're cooked up too long in the bunker. Probably. I'm not going to deny that. You're right. Maybe if I spend the last six months uh, hanging out in Thailand and Bali and uh, one of my favorite places, Republic of Georgia, maybe I wouldn't give a shit about who's winning this election. Better question, who legitimately won? I don't know who legitimately won. That's why I want the recount. I have no idea who legitimately won. That's what I want to know. I'm not going to be upset if Biden legitimately wins. Won't be happy, but I'm not going to be upset about it. I mean, if the people want Biden, then the people want Biden. Not, not the people in government, not the people at the top, not the corporate elites. If the, there is a reason why an American citizen has a vote in the election. If the American citizens honestly elect Biden, then that's what the country wants. Well, if America wants to vote for socialism and slowly turn their country into Venezuela, that's fine. That's fine. That's okay. I will leave. If that's what they want, I will leave. But I am not going to just sit here and allow them to do it by cheating to turn America into Venezuela. If it's going to happen, it should be the choice of the people. If the people want to uh, relive Venezuela in the States, then that is what the people have decided. And this is where I don't have, uh, I have some sympathy for the people in Venezuela, but not as much sympathy if um, they elected their socialist government in a fair election, and that's how it started. I have some sympathy for what happened, but not as much uh, if it was taken from them by cheating. See the difference? Do you guys see the difference? Where would you go, Tone? I can't discuss where I would go. So uh, I've already talked too much about where I've been and where I am. Someone is saying, where is the proof? Uh, like the election just happened. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it takes time. No one is going to call you personally. You know, the um, 100 experts are not going to uh, personally show up at your house a day after the election to show you proof of cheating in the election. This can take months. This can take years to actually prove. The problem is we need a president by January 10th or January 20th. I forget what the inauguration day is. Because if there's no president on January 10th, do you know who your president is? It's Nancy Pelosi. In fact, I would actually absolutely love that. I think every person in America, that if, if they don't do this recount, I actually hope Nancy Pelosi is your president. Um, on January 10th. Speaking of Twitter, uh, I'm going to go to my Twitter.
I really hope this is the outcome because so, so I tweeted out, I tweeted out this poll, which was interesting. I was really curious. I was honestly curious. Uh, where's my, where are the polls? I was genuinely curious. This was a legitimate question. I, you can still vote in this, by the way. Um, what do you think is more likely to cause massive civil unrest? And here's my definition of massive civil unrest. Uh, bigger than the civil unrest with the BLM movement. So the civil unrest that we saw in 2020, um, I'm, I'm, the question is, I probably should have phrased it that way. Um, civil unrest for 2021 to be greater than the civil unrest for 2022. And I said, under which condition is this more likely? If Biden is sworn in as president, if Trump is sworn in as president, there will not be uh, civil unrest if either one of them is sworn in. And uh, you're a loser was basically show me results. So more people um, hate me than answering a legitimate question. And this clearly shows that there is a way higher probability of massive civil unrest and over 3,000 people voted. So that's a good sample size. That's a good sample size. And this is actually an unbiased sample size because remember, I think a lot of people that follow me um, are also Trump supporters. And even they say that massive civil unrest is more likely if Trump is your next president. Is that a reason to vote for Biden? It's not for me. It's not for me. Um, but um, maybe it's for some, but then I decided to alter the question. And I said, if neither of them are sworn in as president on, uh, in January, then Nancy Pelosi is your president. She's third in line for presidency right now. Um, like the 20 people in line behind her to be president are all Republicans. But, you, but right now, if tomorrow uh, uh, Trump and uh, if something happens to Trump and Pence, Pelosi becomes your president. And if neither of these two are sworn in, Pelosi is your president. And look at the poll. Uh, the poll now says that there will be more civil unrest if Pelosi is the president. Uh, and that's what like U.S. deserves. You deserve Pelosi as your president next year um, if you can't actually count valid votes. It's what, the, it's what the country deserves. Pelosi as your president. Like some of the hypocrisy is insane. Like there was literally like a guy tweeting out uh, on the same day. So when, uh, when there was a big upset in college football and all the fans ran on the field to celebrate, he's like, I can't believe people are doing this. This is so dangerous in Corona. The same day he's praising everyone partying together on the street because Biden won. Like the hypocrisy from these people is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, like if I go to my liked tweets, maybe it'll be there. Uh, let me see. Profile. Liked. I don't retweet much, but I do hit the like button on many tweets. Hold on. I'm looking for it. Like this. All right. So does this mean Corona's over? These are the people that were telling you you're going to die if you leave your house. These are the same people. These are the people celebrating uh, because some news headline said Biden won. Ah, oh, I guess I didn't hit the like button uh, on the other one. But anyway, so there was people praising this nonsense uh, while at the same time, uh, on the same day, calling that if you do this same thing of uh, getting together with other people in any other setting other than their candidate winning, you're killing people with COVID.
I don't know if I want to move to Russia. As a Russian, I don't know if I want to move to Russia. Maybe. Or well, Bitcoin's rising. So gold is probably rising. Yep. I'm still not convinced. Uh, I At this point, I would need Bitcoin to get back above this line. Until Bitcoin is above $15,600, uh, this is not enough for me. I like the fact that we held the support line, but this little rise is not enough. Um, I'm looking at resistance right here. And I think it will be challenging to pass this resistance. I still think I'm going to get my dip. I still think I'll be able to buy Bitcoin under 14,000. And I'm waiting for that. If not, I'll probably buy above 15.6, maybe 15.7. So I'm willing to wait for it to get back up there. I'm willing to wait for it to get back up there. Look, 99, like maybe not 99, but 90% 90 of the time, I will tell you that there is absolutely no difference as to who the president's going to be, whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. But Trump is not a politician. And that's why he gets my vote, because he's not a politician. No, I wouldn't move to New Zealand. No way. No New Zealand, no Australia. I do. I really like Brisbane. I would go there for a few months, but no, I think New Zealand and Australia are, I think we lost those countries already. I don't think there's that much freedom there. Not for the average person. COVID has been a completely politicized. I've lost thousands of Twitter followers this week. I don't care. I don't care. I didn't start this channel to, you know, capitalize on uh, followers. Now, that's not why I started the channel. I would love to get to 100,000 YouTube subs, so please subscribe. Uh, just a nice round number. It's just a, been a target of mine for a while. But I don't do clickbaity headlines. I don't send out tweets just to get a bunch of likes and the retweets. It's not how I do it. The problem is uh, the Republican Party doesn't want Trump to win. There is a few Republicans that want Trump. There's no Democrats that want Trump to win. So that's, that's off the table. And I would say maybe 20 to 25% of Republicans actually like Trump and want Trump to win. Everybody else, uh, like no politician wants Trump. I would say 75% of Republican politicians, they want Biden. They would rather have Biden. They would rather have Bernie Sanders. Uh, they would rather have anyone. They would rather have any lifelong politician than Trump. They'll take Bernie. If there is there anyone more communist, more socialist, communist than Bernie, uh, they'll take a communist. They will take a straight up. Um, there is a communist party, by the way. There is a communist party in the U.S. They usually run in the election. They don't get much votes. 
Um, they will, uh, the Republican Party will probably prefer a straight up uh, representative from the U.S. Communist Party, as long as that representative has been in Congress or in office in public in uh, in the public sector, not the private sector, for more than 20 years. If that person has been in the public sector for more than 20 years, it doesn't matter if they ha- are an admitted communist. Uh, the Republican uh, would rather have the Republican uh, uh, politician would rather have that guy than Trump. So no, I'm not, uh, I'm not a fan of the Republican Party by any means. If Trump starts his own media organization, I'd, I'd watch. I'd watch it. It, it. It's so crazy. Every tweet that Trump sends has warning signs that he's lying it's in it, it, it how does twitter even know that immediately after the tweet and some of those tweets are just so general that there's no like facts there to say that the facts are wrong like but there's no facts to be wrong because there's no facts it's just a general view of things Look, Roger Veer and I disagree, but he certainly had it right when he, uh, you know, switched passports, what, four years ago, five years ago? Uh, I'll give Roger credit on that. Uh, He forgot what Bitcoin was and decided to be a dictator of his own money, which is unfortunate. But uh, Roger's lifestyle was certainly accurate. And long before uh, people like me, uh, saw it coming. Yeah, I said it before on this channel. I'll say it again. In my lifetime, uh, adult-ish lifetime, uh, in my adult-ish lifetime, uh, since above the age of 10, the only president I actually liked was Trump. Were you following politics at 11? I wasn't following politics, but um, you're in high school as if you are 13. And when you're in high school, you are being taught politics. Uh, I mean, when I was in high school, uh, I think that the main topic for two years was whether um, uh, w- whether Clinton should be impeached for a blowjob. Um, so yes, I was definitely following politics. Maybe not at 11, but at 13, uh, because uh, we spent, uh, because two years uh, of high school uh, life was spent uh, understanding uh, whether a blowjob is an impeachment offense. So yes, uh, I've been following politics from a very young age.
All right, I'm gonna wrap this up, but let me see if there's any other questions. Hey, uh, Shippendales, thank you for your super chat. I will have a shot of tequila. Uh, let's see. You know, I've seen the headline. I'm on screen share, right? I've seen the headline, but I didn't really read it. Uh, and it's gone. Popular BSV multi-sig provides no security. No security at all. And eventually the coins all go poof. But they haven't gone poof yet. And there's not that many coins because no one is hold, no one is dumb enough to hold BSV. So who cares? Who cares? There's nobody competent enough to program in BSV. Like, come on, it's a joke. Who cares? There are no lessons to be instructed to be uh, someone put a comment. There are no lessons here. Uh, I like this. Uh, even though there was nothing of value lost, uh, there are probably a few lessons to extract from this. No, there aren't. What lessons? There's no lessons. Anyone that is still dumb enough to hold BSV or BCH, th there's no lessons. Like, like those days are long gone, long gone. Guys, I'm long-term bullish. The weekly chart is still bullish. I sold my position and um, right now I can buy back cheaper, literally this second. I'm taking a chance. I think I'll be able to buy it cheaper than that. But uh, if I didn't have any, if I, if I didn't still have some, I would not risk that. I'm just trying to capitalize on a bigger dip, but uh, I still think this bull market has started. It's the time to buy dips, not the time to sell rallies. Right, I agree. Right, someone who just wrote that. If you are still buying shit coins, you have not learned your lessons. Right, right, right. It's still like, like lessons should have been learned in 2017. If you're still buying into this garbage, like there's no more lessons for you to learn. There's one last lesson. When you... Uh, lose all of your money and can't afford internet, and then you can't do any more stupid buys of shit coins. And that's your last and final lesson at this point. Am I? Do I think it's going to remain bullish till end of year? Yeah, it'll be bullish till end of year. Even if we fall down to twelve thousand, it's still bullish. No matter what happens, I mean, we'd have to, here's the year, here's the start of the year. Uh, the year started at $7,000 and then the year topped pre-COVID at 10,000. So as long as we stay above $12,000, we're closing the year bullish and positive, even though uh, we're gonna drop in the last 30 days. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 30 days, but look at my arrows. I think we've gone up a little too far too fast. And I do think we're going to pull back to that $12,000 area. Now, because we have gone further up, I don't think we're going to fall as much. So now I think we're only going to fall to about 10 instead of falling down, sorry, to about 12 instead of all the way down to 11. So right here, 12, 12 and a half is where I'm looking for my pullback.
All right, guys, that's it for me. If you want to support, check out tonevase.com. Uh, I'm going to, hopefully we can stop talking about the election soon. I'm going to try to calm down, but it's just so frustrating. And uh, half the people, well, less than half the people, 45% of those that voted uh, don't want to recount ballot votes because they probably know that their side would lose. That's why I said 45%. It may not lose. Biden may still win. I just want valid votes to be counted. So I want. Apparently, that's an unreasonable request. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all.